Success on the internet a lot of times relies on virality. Sites like Vine, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube are breeding grounds for this kind of content. The hope is that the content you produce garners the attention of the masses. But what's not talked about is what happens when it's too much to handle? What happens when the wrong people catch wind of it? This is the story of Morai, an online interactive experience that truly feels one of a kind, and why you can't play it anymore. This is Chris Johnson, an accomplished indie game developer from Adelaide, Australia. In among the countless games he's created is a game called Morai. Morai is a short first person freeware game for the PC, originally released in 2014. Morai was created by Johnson, Brad Barrett and John Osterman as part of the 2013 7D FPS game jam. It wasn't completed in time, so the trio completed it on their own over the course of a few months. The game draws inspiration from the interactive theatre piece entitled A Game of You, which Chris had previously attended. He spawned in a small, pixelated town and surrounded by houses and a handful of NPCs. There the townsfolk tell you that a woman has gone missing near a cave. You make your way to the cave and are greeted by a lumberjack who says, My brother and I were chopping wood when we heard moans coming from the cave, and my brother went to investigate. You enter the cave armed with a lantern, where you stumble across the lumberjack's brother. He tells you, the moans are coming from further down. I'd go, but my sight's no good. And hands you a knife. Who knows if you may need it. After the encounter, you find three paths to go down. The left path has bones, seemingly belonging to a child. To the right, you find nothing but markings on the wall and a tool used to make them. And finally, down the middle path, you're met by a farmer, whose clothes are blood splattered. You're given a choice. Ask him a question, let him go, or kill him. You're prompted to ask the blood splattered farmer three questions. Why do you have blood in your overalls? Why do you have a knife? I heard moans, what have you done? The twist is that the answer to these questions, the answers delivered by the blood splattered farmer, are entered by the last person to play the game. You continue down the central path to find the dying woman. I came here to end my life. My name is Julia, and I want to see my child and husband in heaven. She asks you to kill her. You can choose to kill her, or you can choose to go for help. If you choose to go for help, she'll spit blood at you, covering your overalls and blood regardless. On your way out of the cave, you're held up by another farmer who asks you the exact same questions you previously asked the other blood-soaked farmer. Once you've answered them, the game is over. Let me see what is to be done with you, the farmer says in closing. Later, you get an email, letting you know how the farmer chose to react to your answers, ultimately deciding your faith. A story based entirely on the outcome of your life, decided on the actions of someone else, aptly named Morai, named from what I can assume is the Greek tale of the Sisters of Faith called the Morai. Three sisters, daughters of Zeus, that spun a piece of thread that symbolized a person's life. When someone is born, a piece of thread is spun and cut symbolizing the person's lifespan from birth to death. Morai isn't a typical pixel game. It isn't a typical game at all. It's an online single player story. And the farmer you met just before seeing the woman was the last person who had played the game before you. The farmer after you leave Julie in the cave is the next person to play the game. On your first encounter with these players, it is natural to assume they're NPCs. No one really expects the dialogue to come from someone who has previously played the game, let alone have the outcome of your experience determined by the next in line to play the story. Of course, that didn't stop human nature of testing the boundaries under the cloak of anonymity. Bye. I heard moans, what have you done? I have masturbated and spread my cum over the dead body of a strange. Morai garnered moderate attention when it first launched, but didn't see viral fame until it was uploaded to Steam on a whim. See, Chris was working on another game at the time, a main project so to speak, called Expand. Expand is a meditative game where you explore the circular labyrinths that twists, stretches and expands around you. Expand received positive reviews but didn't reach the heights Chris would have liked. So in 2016, a year after Expand's release, Chris decided to upload Morai to Steam. What followed? was the last thing Chris ever expected. Around this time, video game content on YouTube was in full swing. YouTubers such as Jacksepticeye and Markiplier were garnering hundreds of thousands of views per day, and when both played Mirai in August of 2016, the game exploded in popularity. As what happens when any game hits popularity on YouTube, more and more people played the game for their own YouTube channels, and more and more people watched, and more and more people downloaded and played Mirai. It went to the top of Steam within days of the viral craze, and Chris, well, Chris wasn't prepared for it. Being that Mirai was an online game, it required storage and server implementation. Chris hadn't planned for the scale in which Mirai required now that thousands of people were trying to play the game all at once. 
and the database crashed. And it had been down for a while since Chris had been spending the day with his family. Later that morning, around 2am, he found that his little project had turned from something cool to being called an email scam. Hundreds of negative reviews flooded the Steam review page, denouncing the game and its small team of creators. Chris hurries to try and fix the issues at hand, and try to fix the exploits. He cleared through the requests, but every time he did, more and more came through, thousands at a time. A little more than what would be expected for the number of times the game had been played. But how could that be possible? When Chris was clearing the requests, something looked strange. All the entries flooding the database all seemed to reference a username and a link to a YouTube page. On the About page, it referenced Chris Johnson himself. The page linked to a Twitter page with multiple posts about Chris and how his game Expand failed, calling his abilities as a programmer into question. This hacker trolled through the Steam forums, giving out their script used to flood Morai's database. What was Chris to do at this stage? This was someone who made a small project with the help of a few friends, not some massive publisher with the resources to tackle a problem like this. Chris didn't have the time or the energy to upgrade the servers, tackle derogatory messages left in his game, or anything else that faced him. Chris took the game down. The somewhat nuclear option, but the right one all things considered. A little while after the game was removed, Chris received a Steam message. Hello. Chris recognised the username. It was the hacker. The same person who posted the kitty script used to take down Marai's server. The same person who destroyed the game for everyone. Chris was talking to the person responsible for the stress he was under. You looking for attention? Chris replied. Yes, I'm looking for attention, the hacker replied. The only question Chris could think of during this awkward encounter was, what did you think of the game? They messaged cautiously back and forth for a while. Chris had cited that the person typed like a child. Would you hack the game again if I put it back up? He asked. No, came the reply. Then, then the hacker said, I'm a game developer too. You should play my game sometime. Mariah is now totally gone. Gone from Steam, gone from any other website, even the one it was originally hosted on. It's a game that I would love to tell people to play without giving any explanation, just to see the reaction. But all we have left is YouTube Let's Plays to look at. Mariah will always be special for me. It's a game I played during the hype, and I loved it. It wasn't overly fun in comparison to other games like Doom, intricate games designed to keep the flow and keep you hyper-focused playing for long periods of time. It was the core concept where it got its charm. A 10 minute simple playthrough where ultimately your fate was decided by the next in line. The outcome of which is given to you via email maybe a couple of hours after when you've moved on to do other things. I don't think there'll ever be another game that simple yet wildly complex in a weird way. I only wish it could have remained for other people to experience. And that was the story of Mirai. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, leave a like and an old comment or something. It helps me out. Uh, you can also go down below and see links to my Twitter and my Twitch and all the other bits and pieces that uh, YouTubers do call to actions for. I don't know. Uh, I got a lot of videos in the works. I just gotta get motivated. It's fucking hard to do so right now. I'm sure we're all aware that, you know, uh, we're still all locked down and stuff. And even though I've got the time, the motivation's just not there. So hopefully I can get more out. I'm really enjoying putting this one together. So hopefully you'll see some more in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.